disease kidney damage, or decrease in glomerular filtration rate over a period of three months or more. Untreated leads to end-stage renal disease, ESRD. Common causes. Diabetes mellitus asterisk asterisk, nephropathy. HTN. Nephrosclerosis, caused by hypertension. Primary glomerular diseases, glomerulonephritis, strep B infection. Clinical manifestations of CKD. Elevated BUN, CR asterisk asterisk asterisk. Monitor for an increase from their baseline. Uremia, high levels of waste in the blood. Oliguria splash anuria. Anemia. Metabolic acidosis, increased respiration rate, increased depth of respirations. Increased RRN depth. Abnormal phosphorus and calcium. Fluid volume excess. Electrolyte imbalances. Na, CA, phosphorus, MG, K. HTN. Fatigue. Weakness. Uremic fader, urine smelling breath, slash odor slash metallic taste in the mouth. Uremic frost on the skin yellowy slash green slash looks like dry white spots. Stages 1 to 5. 1 being the least severe, GFR is okay. 5 being the worst GFR is like 15 aka end stage renal disease, high levels of azotemia. Stage 1 their glomerular filtration rate is normal, they basically have really no signs and symptoms of kidney disease yet so they have normal BUN and creatinine they're asymptomatic so remember your patient with diabetes or hypertension glomerulonephritis they may have chronic kidney disease, but we won't know because they are asymptomatic and there's no lab values are going to tell us that something is going on so that's why prevention is key stage. Low protein high carb diet. Bed rest decreases metabolic rate. Nitrogen is a component of amino acids and urea. Amino acids are the building blocks of all proteins. Proteins comprise not only structural components such as muscle, tissue and organs, but also enzymes and hormones essential for the functioning of all living things. Urea is a byproduct of protein digestion. Treatments. Treat underlying cause. Prevention of complications. Farm treatments. Phosphate binding agents. Calcium supplements. Antihypertensives, careful with ACE inhibitors, usually held before dialysis. Hypertension is a high one of the common causes of chronic kidney disease. Controlling their blood sugars make sure that they have better diet, better nutrition they're keeping up with their medication. Recombinant human erythropoietin. Erythropoietin, given for or subcut, correct severe anemia, so it's given usually during dialysis stays to these patients. It can take actually two to six weeks to see an increase in and there an improvement in their levels and their RBC 5 hemoglobin 15 and hematocrit 45. So because it takes two to six weeks, if somebody is severely anemic, we're going to want to start them with some blood transfusions. They're going to need some blood products. When we're giving this erythropoietin, epoetin alpha is... Another name for it we want to monitor them for hypertension because it can actually cause hypertension and when we actually give dialysis we use access sites which we'll talk about when they're given erythropoietin epoetin alpha that can actually cause clotting at these sites so it'll be important to monitor these sites for making sure that they're functioning. Epoetin alpha. Seizures. Clotting of AV grafts. Monitor blood pressure for HTN. Give four or sub-Q. Renal replacement therapy. Kidney transplant. Complications of CKD. Anemia. Decreased erythropoietin production. Short RBC life cycle. Blood loss during HD therapy. The actual hemodialysis machine, but rather while they're accessing their venous access devices, such as their AV fistula. Bone disease. Elevated phosphorus levels lead to decreased calcium levels and abnormal VIT D metabolism. Hyperkalemia. Decreased excretion. Metabolic acidosis. Catabolism. Excessive intake via diet. Hypertension. NA and H20 retention. 
Malfunction of renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Pericarditis. Cardiac tamponade. Retention of uremic waste. Inadequate dialysis. Nursing care for CKD. Monitor fluid and electrolytes. Monitor respiratory status. Monitor for infection. Encourage optimal nutrition. Restricted protein with ESRD uremia can have some protein at every meal, eggs, dairy, chicken. High quality protein when they do have it urea is a waste product of protein breakdown so builds up in a patient has kidney disease so if they have more protein they're going to have more urea protein is given but restricted according to weight at snacks but we need to make sure we monitor it and limit it also too many sources of protein are actually high in phosphorus they already have high phosphorus which then causes low calcium so it's very important to collaborate with the dietitian get them in to review their diet with them because again when they go home they really need to be able to maintain whatever status they're in whatever stage they're in at this chronic kidney disease so it does get worse restricted sodium low sodium diet is less than two grams a day or 2000 milligrams a day this is going to help to decrease the fluid buildup vitamin supplements Monitor potassium intake. Skin care can give Benadryl for increased urea, makes skin itchy. Promote self-care. Educate client about alternating rest periods with activity. Emotional support. Daily weights. Aluminum hydroxide or the phosphorus binding agent. Hemodialysis. Can be used short term or long term can extract excess nitrogenous waste from the blood and remove excess waste and fluids. Diffusion, osmosis, and ultrafiltration can be given through vascular access site, short-term like for AKI, infection hematoma, which is blood under blood buildup under the skin we have a risk for pneumothorax if that catheter travels risk of clotting of the subclavian vein and we have risk of inadequate flow so if you see that you're supposed to be flushing these catheters with normal saline catheters could be removed if the patient know if all of a sudden the acute kidney injury is starting to be reversed or if it's taking too long and we need to start moving them towards the more permanent AV fistula V graft arteriovenous fistula given for more long-term infection risk no redness no pain no bruising no swelling no areas of bulging or like blood is getting stuck for punctures can lead to infection can't be used until it's mature like six weeks av fistula is not matured yet and the dialysis accesses it prematurely it can cause it to collapse need to hear brute and feel thrill Feels like a vibration we want to make sure that we're making that those good CSM so it's the skin temperature and warmth the same on that arm listen for the AV fistula brute using a stethoscope so this is every at least every shift. No blood pressure or labs on this arm. Not put an IV or draw blood for labs from that same arm what happens is that blood pressure is when we use the cuff it can actually cause a clot in the fistula. No blood draws from dialysis port. While you wait for this to mature, might have another port in use. Monitor pulses, bleeding, clots, cap refill. No heavy lifting. Careful with tight clothing. Try not to sleep on extremity. This is their lifeline, protect it. Complications of hemodialysis asterisk. Hypotension. Muscle cramping, extra fluid removal or with hypocalcemia. Exsanguination, bleeding, monitor them for bleeding an hour after the patients. Dysrhythmias. Air embolism, stroke. Dialysis disequilibrium, fluid shift in the brain, affects neuro, during or immediately after and what it is is it's caused by fluid shifts in the brain. Headache. N slash V. Restlessness. Decreased LOC. Seizures. Maybe give anti-seizure med phenytoin, elevated BUN, who is maybe you know that the BUN is going to be over 150 it most likely occurs in elderly patients and so what happens is when this starts to occur we're going to dialysis stress is going to stop dialysis immediately and actually administer IV diazepam dilantin. Stop the dialysis leads to increased intracranial pressure because of your fluid chips. So you need to give the patient like anti-seizure meds dilantin, phenytoin, and mannitol. 
peritoneal dialysis accounts for 15 to 35 percent of hospital admissions used to remove toxic substances and metabolic waste and to re-establish normal FNE and balance. Slower dialysis methods through the peritoneal cavity. Diffusion, osmosis, ultrafiltration through peritoneal membrane. When you start dialysate, make sure it is warm, room temp, prevent cramping. When dealing with the tubing sterile technique TO prevent infection you can remove the old dressing that's holding the catheter to the abdomen with unsterile gloves because you're touching something that's dirty but once that's open then you put on your sterile gloves. If patient complains of abdominal pain slow slash stop infusion asterisk. Fluid that goes in should come out same amount same color etc. If color is cloudy might indicate an infection asterisk. Infection going on inside that drainage solution is going to be cloudy. We don't want that we remember we want whatever goes in to come out. We want to look the same and be the same volume up. Some other signs and symptoms of peritonitis include abdominal pain fever and abdominal rigidity. So like a stiff abdomen. Do have to wash their hands. Keep the catheter in place besides it being taped. The patient doesn't really want to wear any tight clothing or belt around the site because again, it's a surgical incision and they they want to make sure it stays clean. If fluid isn't coming back out, try changing positions. Make sure that when you take off that dressing that there's no odor or drainage. Sometimes a little bit of leaking can occur around the site you know, but you want to monitor it. Make sure that it's not excessive. Make sure that you keep this the site dry too because the the fluid the dialysate can cause skin breakdown. Complications. Peritonitis, fever, rigid abdomen, bleeding, pain, mask on point and ruse, gloves, sterile procedure. Prevent infection hypertriglyceridemia, continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, CAPD, performed at home, allows client more freedom, requires serious compliance, diffusion and osmosis, client performs exchanges four or five times a day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the longer the dwell time, the better the clearance of uremic waste least expensive the patient has more independence with personal dialysis at home versus having to go in for hemodialysis okay they have less diet and fluid restrictions the patient that has better kidney function would be eligible for peritoneal dialysis complications peritonitis can follow a clean technique at home to prevent infection throw them in trendelenburg if dizzy and lightheaded Contact HCP if temp 100 degrees. No fistula for peritoneal, just hema. It's a slower process. It's continuous throughout the day, and it's basically for patients that they're not stable. So it's done. In critical care ICUs, and it has less effect on your vitals. So this patient is going to be severely unsteady. Continuous renal replacement therapy, CRRT. Used in clients who are hemodynamically unstable, clients with FVE and oliguria. Critical care expertise. Continuous venovenous hemofiltration, CVVH. Used in client with AKI. Continuous slow fluid removal, benefits equals less effect on hemodynamics. Critical care expertise. ESRD kidney transplant. Limited to availability of organs. Improved survival rate. Improves quality of life. Kidney being donated needs to be matched to recipient to avoid graft versus host. Acute rejection happens within 24 hours. Kidney must be taken out monitor for high BUN and creatinine high fluid high choline hyperkalemia. All the different signs of acute kidney injury basically are the signs and symptoms of a kidney transplant being rejected. Chronic happens after that, at risk for this for life. Immunosuppressant drugs prescribed to minimize the risk, azathioprine, cyclosporin, glucocorticoids, for life. Asterisk risk for complication of HTN after a kidney transplant. Nursing care. 1. Assess for transplant rejection. 2. Prevent infection, good oral care, don't hang W sick people. Shaking chills or fever high HR, high RR. 3. 
monitor urinary function, they may still need dialysis for a little bit just to maintain that homeostasis right until the transplant kidney starts working and functioning well. 4. Address psychosocial concerns. Monitor for depression anxiety. We want to make sure that this patient doesn't have depression and after kidney transplant or anxiety over having somebody else's organs inside their body because that can lead to them not taking their medications. So if they're not taking those immunosuppressive drugs, they're going to end up with kidney rejection, the transplant rejection. Risk of complication after kidney transplants of hypertension. So these patients is always going to be on antihypertensives non-ACE. Beta blocker back in 2009 about 46% of people on the waiting list over 60 years of age died waiting for a kidney transplant, give a steroid to help it not to reject this new organ. Medications for elimination. Side effects slash nursing considerations. Sodium bicarbonate. For metabolic acidosis. Used to treat metabolic acidosis. Metabolic alkalosis, adverse effect. Contraindicated with sodium restricted diets. Calcium acetate slash chloride. For hypokalemia. Cardiac arrest with rapid for use, arrhythmias. Renal calculi. Monitor for S slash S hypercalcemia. Asterisk given for hypocalcemia. Prednisone. For transplant. Hypokalemia, hyperglycemia. Hypocalcemia. Adrenal abnormalities. GI bleeding, peptic ulcers. Infection, moon face, weight gain, FVE. Ipoatin alpha. For lack of RBC. Seizures. Clotting of AV grafts. Monitor blood pressure for HTN. Give 4 or sub Q. Cyclosporin, immunosuppressant. Nephrotoxicity slash hepatotoxicity. Bone marrow suppression. Azathioprine. Immunosuppressant. Bone marrow suppression. Increased risk of neoplasia. Mycophenolate moftal. Immunosuppressant. Bone marrow suppression. Acute renal failure. Hemorrhage. Ferrosamide slash bumetanide. Potassium depleting diuretic. Hypokalemia, hyponatremia. Hypomagnesemia. Tinnitus, IVP, orthostatic hypotension, nocturia. Manitol, osmotic diuretic. Seizures, pulmonary edema. Do not give to CHF patients, hypertonic solution. Helps decrease NA and K and waste products. Sevalimir. Phosphorus binding agent. Take with meal. Do not crush, cut, or chew. Prevents your body from absorbing phosphorus. Aluminum hydroxide. Used to reduce phosphate levels in people with certain kidney conditions. Intestinal obstruction. Encephalopathy. Sodium polystyrene sulfonate. k -exalate. For K greater than 5.3. Hypokalemia. Hypocalcemia. Hypomagnesemia. Diarrhea. Given rectally slash enema or PO. Dopamine, vasodilator. Ventricular arrhythmias. Asthmatic episodes. 